Hello, I'm Pastor Dave Shue, welcoming you to our devotions for the day. Um, I'm the pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church, but today we're in my home again. I'm hoping we'll be back in the church next week. We've been talking about suffering this week, which is an incredibly difficult topic for us as humans. Today we read from the third chapter of John's Gospel, verses 16 and 17, which are well known. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Suffering is never the intention of God. Um, it drives me kind of crazy when people talk about God causing suffering. God desires joy and peace and life for us. By the same token, for some reason, God decides that we need to have a choice about love, a choice to love God, a choice to follow God, a choice to love each other. And so from the beginning, despite God's desire, there's suffering. And suffering's never good. Suffering breaks the heart of God each and every day. Jesus' death on the cross is for us the clearest sort of image of that reality, that God enters into our suffering. God suffers with us. God bears our pain right along with us. And God is at work amidst the pain to bring new life and new possibilities for us, to bring hope. For God so loved the world, it says in John's Gospel. In the midst of suffering, God is at work trying to undo the bonds of death and bring new life. That's what Paul means in the book of Romans when he writes, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Or the message translation puts it this way. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired and waiting, God's spirit is right alongside us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in us and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked out into something good. The knowledge that God does not desire suffering and yet comes and bears our suffering with us calls us as God's people also to enter into the suffering of the world for the sake of God's love. Mother Teresa offers some powerful words to us. She says, Today, Somebody is suffering. Today, somebody is in the street. Today, somebody is hungry. We've only today to make Jesus known, loved, served, fed, clothed, sheltered. Do not wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow we may not have them if we do not feed them today. Suffering is terrible. God is broken each day by our suffering. And in the suffering of God, the suffering of Christ on the cross, we understand God's love more deeply. And we too follow Christ as we enter into the suffering of others with the love of God. In the end, strangely enough, we as Christians choose suffering because suffering can never be separated from love. One of the most powerful movies I've seen is called Shadowlands. It's the story of the famous Christian thinker C.S. Lewis's um, marriage to a divorcee named Joy, who came into his life kind of suddenly and surprisingly. She brings her young son into that relationship as well. C.S. Lewis, for the first time in a long time, is touched to the heart by love. You see, C.S. Lewis has shut himself off for many years because of the death of his mother and the loss of love that that brought. It hurt him so badly that he closed himself off to protect himself from suffering. But joy opens his heart, and they marry. 
They marry knowing joy has cancer. They choose to face that together in love. One point in the movie, Joy goes into remission and they're both so happy as they go for a, a time in the country together. But Joy wants C.S. Lewis to understand the reality of what's happening. And so she says, remember, the happiness now is a part of the pain then. That's the deal. He hears her, but he doesn't really hear her until the cancer returns. It returns with a vengeance, and after a painful time, Joy dies. At first, Lewis can't deal with the grief. It's overwhelming for him, but his brother reminds him that there's also the young boy to think of. Lewis finally sits down and talks with his adopted son. And they, in a moment of incredible openness and pain, begin to cry together. They share their grief together. They share their love together for each other and for joy. And the, and the movie ends with Lewis reflecting this way in the background as he and his son now walk through the country. Why love if losing hurts so much? I have no answer anymore only the life I've lived. Twice in that life I've been given the choice as a boy and as a man. The boy chose safety, the man chooses suffering. The pain now is a part of the happiness then. That's the deal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Suffering is never good, no matter what comes out of it. Suffering is never good, but those who love are not afraid to enter suffering for the sake of love. We know that often the suffering is a part of the love. And in Jesus, we know that because of love, suffering never has the last word. Never. Let us pray. Lord, we hate suffering. And we know that you also hate what it does to your children. Yet you always stand with us in the midst of our suffering because you love us. Help us to love one another as you have loved us, even when that leads us into suffering. Amen. Well, as I said, next week, I hope we're back in the church. We'll be talking about Thanksgiving next week um, as we approach the day of Thanksgiving. What I encourage you to do is take some time each day, like 10 minutes, and just sit and think about all the things that you're thankful for in that day and in the days before. Fill your heart with Thanksgiving, and we'll talk more about it next week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care.